Hello and welcome to the Delphian podcast. Delphian is an artist-led nomadic gallery focusing on emerging and early career artists. Each episode will feature a different art world practitioner, from artists and gallerists to collectors and curators. If you liked today's episode, please like, share and subscribe. Hello and welcome to the Delphian Podcast. My name is Nick J.S. Thompson and with me is the wind beneath my wings, Benjamin Murphy. I didn't think you were going to say that. (laughs) Put that in thinking, will he say it? So today our guest is painter and enfant terrible of the art world, Richie Culver. His uh, rice terrical works are arresting when working with painting or sculpture and often reference things like Robbie Williams, Caravans, Adidas Sportswear and Princess Diana. There you go. How yeah, are you? Yeah. I'm okay, thanks. Uh, nice to be here. Uh, looking forward to... Chatting some caravans. Chatting, yeah, talking some stuff. And because uh, I did the interview with you before on online, so we, we kind of... Yeah, we some, got deep. Got quite deep there, man. I, I was in Israel when I was... I actually remember that time very... Specifically, so uh, yeah, it was a, it was a cool interview. It wasn't cool. It was just it, it was nice to have sort of gone in the areas that we went to. So I'm looking yeah, forward to well, this. If you're listening, yeah. you can find that on uh, DelphianGallery dot com. Um, yeah, there you go. Nice, nice. <laughs> so, what is your background, and how did you get to the point that you're at now? Uh, long. Well, I'll keep it. I'll keep it as simple as possible. Uh, I was brought up in in Hull in the north of England. Uh, I know you know well. Well, you know no, the north, right? You yeah, kind of, you know north, the yeah. north, you know the vibe. Uh, yeah, uh, pretty standard, normal, not whatever normal is in in the north. Uh, I don't know what normal is to be honest with you, uh, but it was normal to me growing up. There was no art. I mean, I'm not going to get too personal. There was there was no inklings of art kind of growing up or whatever. Uh, I used to draw Bart Simpson and shit like that in the back of <laughs> back of books. Was obsessed with drawings, uh, football kits, and designing stadiums and stuff like that. So I guess there was there was bits and bobs creeping in, but creatively, yeah. creatively, yeah. Uh, arts class, I was kind of I made a few Game Boy covers and stuff like that. So there was there was, but nothing was ever directed in in any kind of direction that. Uh, that I've ended up in. I was very much into football and wanted to pursue that, really. Uh, that didn't happen. Left school, uh, zero GCSEs or qualifications, uh, and then went straight into working in caravans, which was kind of... Uh, I sort of grew up in and around caravan sites. I'm not a traveller, but I, I grew up in and amongst... Uh, I'll just say caravans, in amongst lots of caravans. Right. So what do you mean you were working with caravans, like selling them or something? Uh, no, m- making them. There oh, was, right. Yeah, there was, there's lots of quite a big caravan industry in Holland. We live just on the front of a caravan site. Uh, there's quite a lot of caravan sites in and around where we live. And then I found myself making them, basically. Uh, absolutely detested it. Uh, kind of... But that was my reality, so straight from school, kind of kicking around school, just enjoying it as you kind of go through the ranks of school. You go through, you know, naturally being in the first year, then by the time you've really got your feet under the table and you're feeling comfy within the school, it's time to leave. And then it's like, well, fuck, get a job. Mm. Uh, never really thought about that. Then I found myself like working in a tin shop, making caravans, super depressing. Mm. Uh, but luckily, to back up all that, after my career, football career took a took a little left turn because of the partying I was doing and some of the substances I started taking and the alcohol I started drinking. Weekends became everything to me whilst I was working in the caravan site uh, and on the in the car on the caravan factory at the caravan factory. Then you know there was a little glimmer of hope, as in okay. I work my ass off, you know, uh, seven a.m. till like six p.m. Whatever it was, and then just go and party on a weekend. And uh, 
my, I guess the windows were open to sort of a different life, different uh, emotions, different feelings from taking different substances. Uh, opened opened up new realms, and then I, I was interested in pursuing that for as much as possible. You know, as as much as possible. Yeah. So let's talk about the content of your work. So you've recently moved away from representation and your work's become a little bit more conceptual. What yeah, is yeah. the reasoning behind that? Uh, let me just navigate going from, from the caravan site now to kind of like today. <laughs> I, I, I was way back there, man. I, I had the overalls on and everything. Right, let me take them off. And right, 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 and Different kind of overalls. Conceptual art. Uh, I, thought, I mean... I, I was trying so hard to be a great artist. Uh, I still do. I still am trying to be a great artist, but I was just, I just felt that I was, uh, I've just always been trying so hard at everything really. And uh, within this, I felt, I feel like I have a lot of control over what I do. And I, I decided to stop trying so hard and uh, just do what comes absolutely naturally. Uh, titles have always been a real uh, strong point in my work, or a fun part anyway. So I thought I'm 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 gonna can I'm gonna start letting the titles have the front seat in my work, and just was kind of work with text, and uh, that's kind of where I'm at the moment, and sort of cement and uh, the steel and whatnot, and. Uh, yeah, but I'm 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 just stripping everything back as much as possible. So I'm really not painting anymore. I'm kind of trying not to be in contact with the canvas for as much as possible. Uh, yeah, working on raw canvas and talking about. I mean, I, I don't want to skip too forward. Uh, talking about, I'm just going everything back to basics. I'm going back to sperm. <laughs> you know, it doesn't get more kind of in the nutsack than that. Uh, so I'm stripping everything back to its most basic basic form. Uh, why why sperm and why not egg? Uh, because I'm a man, I guess, and uh, I guess I relate to uh, what I am more than uh, what someone else is. Uh, yeah, so that's that. So the, your paintings, especially like the recent ones, mm. get a huge online response. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. And sometimes not always positive. Does does that um, is the response to, to them? Is that does that become a part of the work itself? Uh, I I decided a few a few months ago. Uh, I was in a really quite dark space uh, for personal reasons. Uh, I was in, I was just in the studio and you know you know the process in the studio it's it's really it's really blurry and making decisions and then not making them and kind of and then all all of a sudden it was I'm just I, I bought these huge canvases uh, had them stretched and I hadn't you know I literally hadn't touched them so you know sometimes I stretch them sometimes I work on raw uh, and I was like it was really expensive and I, I want I was like do you know something I want to I want to do as least as possible you know and I got on a ladder and I wrote did you come yet just and, and then kind of all in one kind of gesture and then I was like it's done it's kind of done uh, and I guess that subconsciously I, I've, I've got a group show coming up at, uh, at the bomb factory Art Foundation where Mike Ballard has just shown yeah. and various other people. It's a really nice space. And I'd already decided that that exhibition is going to be called Wet Dreams Die Hard. And it's kind of like the process of, uh, well, it's autobiographical, I guess, wanting to be a footballer, kind of wanting to be an artist. Uh, then sort of going more uh, in my teenage years, kind of having wet dreams and kind of finding out <laughs> about my sexuality and kind yeah. of was I gay, was I straight, kind of all the kind of avenues that I've been down in my life. Uh, so I just, I really wanted to strip everything back in a text form. Sometimes some words and some sentences. I'm a dad now, do you know what I mean? I'm a dad, I have two beautiful young kids and uh, I have a partner that I'm madly in love with. Uh, and I've seen her go through pregnancy twice. I've seen her carry uh, our children, you know, for na nine months, 
and then breastfeed and her career is on standby and I've seen what a woman's had to go through from a man's perspective. So these kind of, these texts that I'm putting on there, it's, it's, people are taking them totally the wrong way. You know, it's, it's coming from a, a genuine love, kind of the compassion side of, did you come yet? Asking, whether it's the man asking the man or the woman asking the woman, or the, in my case, me asking my partner. Uh, it's, that's where it's coming from for me. It's, it's an adult conversation that I'm having. Of course, as soon as social media get hold of this stuff, it you know it's kind of I'm absolutely you know ha, ha, just people don't understand it, uh, which is fair enough. Uh, it didn't take very long to do, and there's nothing wrong with that. I'm t I've I've tried so hard to be a good artist in the past, and now I'm not trying at all, and it's getting a reaction off people, and it's no different to what Tracy Emin's done in the past, you know, other than you know. I don't know. I don't. But, but a guy maybe hasn't hasn't done it. So maybe I'm going into new territory in 2019 with with everything that's going on in the world, and I'm talking about masculinity and how a man stands within his sexuality in a relationship, in an honest relationship. Uh, so it's really quite deep for me. It's not just the whole process, not touching the canvas, doing it on a ladder, and not really coming into contact with the that becomes conceptual, and then of course. I posted that one, uh, you know, we'll go into, we'll get into Instagram later. That's a whole other vehicle that I'm kind of working with and against mm. and hating and, and loving it and needing it, not needing it. But after I posted it and then you guys posted it, I, a list of like uh, online platforms posted it and eventually about 10 million, or something like 5 million <laughs> sort of people, probably maybe 10 million now, uh, but at the time, and I was kind of like, I looked at the painting and that was going to be the, the first, one of the main pieces for the Wet Dreams Die Hard show. And I looked at it and I was like, the hate I was getting was ridiculous. It was getting racist. It was getting about my family. It was mm. going about all the, of course, you know, the galleries was, was liking it. And I'd, I've had collectors at my studio and people are talking about the work positively as well. The pe That's the main part. You know, a lot of these people that are not liking it are... I don't know, frustrated painters that maybe careers aren't where they want it to be or who knows, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to judge them. Uh, but the people have got very angry. So I, s I smashed that piece, smashed it up and uh, and decided that I'm just going to do a book on the comments. It's not about this piece anymore. And I guess this is where it all be starts to become even more conceptual. And I'm not sure what where I am in the history of art with, with what I'm doing with social media and I'm not going to do it again, you know, uh, the canvas was super expensive and whatnot. And it's, uh, <laughs> but like for this, uh, I'm going to smash it up. I made a few smaller versions of it from, from the debris. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that's a long winded explanation of the new work. Mm. So you've made pieces in the past like the um, straight white male artist piece. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That piece was lit, was the, there's a picture of my st I started blowing uh, blowing uh, family photos of you know my stepdad and various members of, of my family and then just sort of added, adding text to them and that one was literally just the first one I did and a lot of I'm trying to work kind of like subconsciously just like getting to the canvas and writing and I saw as I, as I stepped to the canvas I, you know I saw my stepdad's face and then I just wrote down my basic uh, what am I that's not my dad kind of uh, what am I then I didn't know my dad my dad died when I was super young uh, and that's another kind of conversation as to where my work's going as in being a father to my sons at the moment uh, and having that blueprint and, and then kind of so it's, this is all really linked into sort of my own autobiography autobiographical account basically but with that with that piece it's it was I just wrote down what what I am I saw him and then wrote down what I am and it, you know what, what kind of like what, what you'd write at entering a country or whatever is white straight English male artist and it, yeah. there's no nothing more in more than that I, I can't hide what I am yeah uh, and that's exactly what I am I guess that was it uh, again you know my my partner's Jewish which would make my 
son's Jewish. Uh, I, I'm going to link into the circumcision piece now. And yeah. Again, kind oh, yeah. of. Yeah. I was circumcised as a kid, as a white mate white male working class kind of I don't, I'm still not quite sure why I was circumcised uh, so it's since like I've, I've I've gone through life and you know I've linked it to more, religion more uh, and now we're you know my sons are coming to a certain age and we're, we're having this kind of conversation so it, it's all coming through from personal sort of experience of of uh, yeah of of, of kind of come to terms with what I am and then talking about it and it just so happens that I'm talking about it at a time where it's uh, I don't know what it is I don't know you know because everything's so accessible with social media and people can it can come across a different way but I'm just sort of talking about me yeah <laughs> do you know what I mean <laughs> uh, I feel like I have to excuse myself or something uh, mm. as, as I'm, because because I'm doing it uh, all I've got is my story you know, I didn't go to art school, so kind of, uh, I'm self-trained, and everything that I've done has in my career has been autobiographical. Uh, so now, like I say, becoming a father, it's making me look at things and making work about that. Now, the real basic things of kind of being a, a man, what whatever the fuck that means, kind of to, being a man to my kids, showing them, uh, I don't know, how to we all these kind of sort of things that I wasn't shown as a kid. I'm kind of like I, have, I don't have really the blueprint for, so I'm just then talking about it in my studio. You know what mm. I'm saying? Yeah. Some some people might be surprised to realise there are a lot of feminist undertones to your work and your personality. Like last time I saw you, we were talking about feminist literature. Yeah. Um, yeah. What about and, and I think you did you you shared a um, a photo of your ex in the box of the Women's Equality Party. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think people wouldn't necessarily see that in your work, although I think if they know that about you, they then see it in your work. Yeah, yeah. What is it about that that um, inspires you to make work? And why do you think people don't see it? Uh, so obviously there. Uh, it's, it's really difficult to know how how I'm perceived via because you know Instagram is a is a key into everyone's yeah. practice and world X, X Y Z. I've met artists when I've travelled and I it's kind of wow you're totally not what I am at. Uh, so I'm not sure how I come across and why people wouldn't think that uh, I'm quite person. You know I never sort of posted anything about my personal life mm. or kind of it's just it's, my Instagram is for my work and if that's the sketchbook for people to sort of judge me on then so be it I guess even though I see it as an exhibition it's almost like Instagram's a sketchbook and then when I do an exhibition then that's the you know a lot of these the stuff that I'm posting that won't, won't make the shows I'm just kind of I'm, 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 I'm making my way through to the to the sort of to the final piece uh, to the final show uh, but why people would not I don't know, you know, I can't, I can't really comment or care too much about that. It's, you know, being uh, being in love with my partner and I get, and again, sort of being brought up by women. Uh, I did have a stepdad in the house, but it's kind of everything I've learned in life has been from women. I haven't learned anything in life from men, Not nothing meaningful or with any substance. Uh, and I say that from the bottom of my heart I've uh, I've learnt very little from men in life and that's carried me through uh, women, women have taught me everything and continue to teach me everything uh, so therefore maybe it'll come across in my work maybe it doesn't you know uh, that's for other people to sort of judge or, or see or not but uh, yeah seeing my partner you know push two babies out and put her life on hold and stuff like that and as I kind of continue to struggle with my practice and you know she's like there sort of holding me up mentally kind of still you know two kids da 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 you know the list goes on man uh, it's there's a different level of humanity man when you see shit like this first time <laughs> yeah you know, in, in first first hand so uh, yeah uh, women <laughs> <laughs> Um, so going back to you saying that basically your your works are very autobiographical and you're basically putting down what you are 
through your works. Mm -hmm. Is there anything that you've done in your career so far that you've regretted or you, you would change, go back and change? Lords, man. I'm not going to sit on here, though, because I don't know who's going to be listening. <laughs> <laughs> Lords. Uh, let's put it this way. I've done, you know, I've made a lot of... I often wonder that because a lot of the time when I'm kind of not changing style but making adjustments like at the moment I've dropped the figurative and it's just, I'm just like letting the titles and text the text has always been in my work but I'm always like if I was to die tomorrow and all my work was to be in one room would it all make sense would it all kind of have my language and my you know would that it would you would you would be able to tell it to me and that offers me uh it, lots of fear basically that, that it won't at the end of the day no one gives a shit uh, unless <laughs> I get to a certain level but it's, there's this constant narrative with with that I have with my with myself and my work uh, that it's all gonna kind of carry through and make sense one day because uh, I work I'm very prolific and I work hard and I, I, I paint a lot uh, and uh, like I say, I think with the uh, with the Instagram thing and people being able to sort of get a little idea of people's practices, what they see isn't always kind of like they're going to be the end product. You know, do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's just kind of like a narrative, and it's a beautiful narrative to have, man. You know, I think we're pretty blessed to be able to uh, follow each other's careers and galleries and curators, and everyone's got their thing going on. Mm. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't worry about that kind. Of continuity thing like if you if you imagine a room with a Damien Hurst sheep in it next yeah, to yeah, some yeah. spot paintings exactly you didn't know they were him I you? know I know I, I thought that we all went to the Dan Colan show at uh, uh, Newport Street it was kind of like man this is but as soon as you get in there and you walk through it it's so f it was so it was so fun whether they like Dan's work or not it was kind of like man this is this is kind of cool do you know what I mean I could took my son to it it was fun and it all it didn't really make sense, but it all flowed and we went through it yeah. all and, you know, uh, but there's other, you know, but then you've got painters, like, you know, you've got people that just have Robert Narva, for instance, or someone who does a, does a painting and you see it and it's kind of instantly, you know, that that's it. I'm just not a painter at the end of the day. I'm, I'm definitely not a painter. I enjoy painting and I've got stuff to say, but uh, I will never be that person that kind of, that's my work. I, I'm just... It's just hard to come to terms with that. <laughs> That's not. I yeah. feel like mm. I, I should have this like, this uh, stamp that you know, kind of. That's me, kind of thing. But I don't know. I don't know if that was kind of like not going to art school or whatever. The, the, the certain things that I've missed that you know haven't joined stuff together. I can't. I got into photography quite young. I came across Larry Clark and Nan Golding's work, like. Whilst I was working in the caravans, and I got a, I picked up a, a camera, and I had a little go and whatnot. I was like, "What people? You know, people are exhibiting this these kind of works." And I knew that life. I knew all, the, like it was my sort of growing up. I knew these characters mm. and whatnot. And I went to go and you know copy basically. I was like, "I'm going to go and photograph all the people in my sort of area and caravans and whatnot." And uh, and then I just couldn't do it. I felt like I was exposing them. I was like, "Man, this mm. is wrong, man. I can't yeah. do this. These people are just living their lives." But from the back, off the back of all that, I learned about composition, and I kind of I learned about color, and uh, I learned a lot through photography, kind of that links into my practice now. With that's kind of self-taught to the mm. core. It's kind of like I'm only realizing now that I'm this, I guess this far down not that I'm far down but I, I can make sense of it now I can be like, alright that's where I naturally pick that up Yeah. Uh, the, this this and that but with regards to the language and the constant uh, narrative that's going on I don't know I, I feel like it, like with these text works it's like this isn't going to last forever I've, I've got only so much to say in about this and it just happens and it's happening now and I'll get a couple of shows out of it but uh, or not I don't know. Sometimes I overthink it, and it's like you know, I thought, no, so maybe I'll die tomorrow, and none of it will. I don't know. Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Are you working on any more sculpture works at the moment? Because yeah, I've yeah. seen a few of those in the past, and they're fantastic. I love. Thank you, fun. man. Yeah, um, for the Wet Dreams Die Hard show, I'm, I'm doing a. I've got a massive, got full size football goal that kind of crashes in the middle, uh, as in, it goes up and then sort of down and I don't know. It's, 
really bad description. Uh, did you buy it or did you just pull up with a van in the field? No, you made it. Kind of, well, I didn't make it, but uh, collaborative, collaboratively I made it. Uh, and then I'm, I'm sticking a, a sofa in the middle of it and then like loads of potatoes uh, <laughs> on, on, on the sofa. And on the exhibition, I'm toying with getting my friend to uh, play as a Grim Reaper and, and then kind of peel potatoes and then carry them over to the <laughs> thing and pour them pour them on continuously for the opening, continuously pour them. So it'll be more like kind of a performance kind of thing to link in with the wet dreams mm -hmm. or not that I have wet dreams about Grim Reapers. But or potatoes. <laughs> or pot oh, I definitely have, gr <laughs> definitely have Grim dreams about <laughs> potatoes and getting fat. Uh, but yeah, uh, yeah. So whenever this comes out, whether that happens or not, I'll put to the gods. But it's out there now, so no, <laughs> nobody got copying that idea. If this comes out before <laughs> November the twenty first. <laughs> so your aesthetic is very particular to a certain time and place, which yeah, is yeah. I would identify as basically being like nineties working class Britain. Yeah, yeah, which yeah. Which yeah, yeah. I have an experience with. Yeah. Um, what is it about this aesthetic? And also, what do you see being the response from people who have no experience of that? Uh, I've, I'm really trying hard to move away from that working class thing uh, for many reasons. Uh, mainly because I feel the class divide in England just is a separator uh, and we can do without that at the moment in general. Uh, two years ago, I did th uh, an exhibition at, for in Hull for the Hull 2018 City of Culture. It was I had two floors, and there was uh, Tim Noble and Sue Webster downstairs. Oh, nice. I had two floors, and I'm from Hull, and I just happened to name the exhibition. No one knows me, like Dawn from the Job Centre. Uh, so it was kind of like a, a love letter to my to the person that was on the other side of the table that when I would be signing on every week and I spent quite a lot of time on the dole in the past. So speaking from experience, but the class thing, sometimes that I was, there was many parts of my life where I wasn't working class. It was below that because I was never working. Do you know what I'm saying? It was, so I don't like the term working class and I don't know what the, what the word is for what I was because uh, I definitely wasn't working I definitely wasn't looking for a job uh, and yeah I struggle with that but I understand that there's a movement of artists that I'm noticing at the moment that are coming through that some, you know if, if that's what you've got as your thing to talk about then who am I to kind of say sort of don't but when it starts kind of alienating people and whatnot, it, it starts making me feel uncomfortable, uh, especially in the current climate in England at the moment. Uh, so that's why I'm happy with the new works. I'm talking, you know, what I'm talking about sex and relationships and kind of, uh, yeah. And it's, it's so, I'm so happy and relieved to be moving away from that class thing. Uh, it started to depress me a little bit. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, the, on the only reason I bring it up is because that's often something that is kind of tied to your name. hundred percent, hundred percent. And I'm, I'm glad you did. You know what I'm saying? It would have to, you know, we're talking about my work, so it, it has to be, it had to be spoken about. Uh, I think that's the, one of the blessed things with Instagram. I think it's kind of, you know, it's painted pigeons and about the bookies. Botlins and, and... Yeah, Caroline holiday and, shit and, yeah. Uh, and whatnot. But it's kind of like, if you put, if you post quite a lot on Instagram and kind of, you know, you know, studio processes and whatnot, it, all that can be forgotten kind of within a, you know, sort of all of a sudden people are like, so sort of this, all they've seen is this new stuff. Yeah. And it's, it's this really subconscious kind of sly way of kind of, you know, all right, then that was old work. And now all people yeah. know. The other night I went to an exhibition and all people, when we spoke about my work, people were just talking about the cum paint. And I was, there was a little part of me that was like, really happy. It was like, nice one, accomplished. It's a new chapter officially. Uh, not that I'm, I'm definitely not uh, embarrassed or regret that old body of work. I, I, I really like it. I touched on some nice subjects, and it was again autobiographical. But uh, yeah, with the with the the class thing and uh, and whatnot, it's, it's nice to have moved on now. Yeah, you know, matured up a little bit. 
maybe that's what for me it feels uh i don't want to be like putting like divide and like working class middle teaching that shit to my son and whatnot he'll find out themselves anyway but it's like i don't want to be uh you know cutting stuff up and saying that's them and this is us and we like that i used to be like that now and i'm like this he mum's like that now she's like this da, 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 which is kind of it's, you know i don't know i just want to try and spread as much love as possible to them and and white pigeonhole yourself, right? Yeah, 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 mm. yeah, exactly. Mm. So why why the obsession with uh, Robbie Williams and Princess Diana? Uh, Princess Diana, uh, my mum was just obsessed with her, still is. Uh, Princess Diana and, El- and Elvis. Uh, so I made a few works like my mum's Princess Diana calendar and uh, I just got stuck on that little loop a little bit with, with Princess Diana. But I, I'm such a... It was so difficult for me to make those paintings, like figurative and whatnot. Uh, so difficult. It was, I either got them lucky, I could never like, re, you know, I could never do another one. And it, it was really, really difficult for me to pull them off and make them look like, look look original. That's why I, there's so much kind of abstract blankness in the background, which, follows through nicely to, to the new body that the white just like plain sort of sparseness seems to follow me through uh with robbie williams that one that was for the full english show that's just that's just come on uh the, with the title full english and the group of artists that was exhibiting that was a dati right did, yeah yeah i really wanted to uh what's the most english thing i could think of and <laughs> still for me and it's Robbie Williams' Angels, do you know what I'm saying? You know, kind of funeral song, uh, karaoke song, uh, Robbie Williams in general. It's just one of those classic, for me, a classic English song that's kind of shit, kind of great, kind of cheesy, <laughs> kind of uh, just touches all kind of, everyone knows the words. Uh, so it, was, it had to be that. Uh, yeah, uh, but then I kind of I gave it the tried to give it a bit of a gothic twist and I did a oh, double yeah, sided canvas that. with I'm loving angels instead on one side and does this mean I'm dead on the other as in if you're loving angels maybe you were in heaven and that yeah. means you've died and you don't mm. even realise it and it rhymes <laughs> that as well yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> to be honest I haven't um, anyone that actually knows the song really well is, well, he's talking about da 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 I really haven't like dissected the song, what he sings about. I just heard the lyrics, I'm loving angels instead of humans. Well, that's like kind of insane or, or, or you're dead. But no doubt someone will be like, what are you on about? He's talking about. I suppose it's such a vacuous song that you don't really probe into what the lyrics yeah, actually exactly. even mean. <laughs> They're so just words way. that sound good. <laughs> exactly. So you quite often paint on the reverse of the canvases, right? Like in the older body work, you used to put the Jeremy Kyle helpline on the yeah, back yeah, and stuff yeah, like yeah. that. Yeah, so, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I put my mum's old telephone number. <laughs> Jeremy, Jeremy Carl help them thank me later. Like I put it on every canvas for that for that body of work. Sometimes really, but I always got it in somewhere. If I bought a canvas off you and it had that on the back, I'd hang it the wrong way around. Yeah, yeah, well, <laughs> exactly. Exactly. The backs were better than the front. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. Are you carrying that on the like painting on the reverses in the new body of work at all? No, 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 not at all. Uh, I'm I'm really not taking the make that was that was me going over the top and being bored and kind of like you know rattling around my studios da, 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 da. now it's kind of you know my time in my studio is limited now and I have to work smart instead of like working hard and like with my time and whatnot so it's uh, the minimal approach suits me uh, uh, I've been working a lot with hand prints as well kind of like like really going back to basics and kind of like leaving, thinking about leaving a handprint instead of a signature for the next year. Oh, nice. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's the first time I said that out loud. Again, I might regret that. <laughs> uh, but there's something, yeah, there's something super back to basics about it all. I want to like strip every, like that's the only time that I do touch the canvas uh, is, is with my hand to sign it. Uh, yeah. I've had this idea for a while that I've always thought was a great idea, but I've never done it. As just signing my every piece, just signing it as a different person. Mm. It's like signing it as like Damien Hurst one day, 
yeah, yeah, yeah. Caravaggio the next. I've never done it. I don't know why. Yeah. Uh, all right. So what do you do when you're struggling for inspiration? Do you know something? I don't, I, I don't, I don't know the answer to that. I don't think I've ever, when I was trying to, words come so easily to me, uh, for a sort of relatively uneducated dude, I kind of, I'm good at, uh, picturing things and then putting, I don't know what to describe the way that I'm feeling. I think I'm good at something is and what that brings to the world. Writing, did you come yet? <laughs> I don't know. Not that, but just like kind of titles and seeing the poetic side in things. Uh, so at the moment, whilst I'm writing, working in text, I've just got so many uh, ideas at the moment. Uh, but when I was trying to, when I was really trying to be a great painter, uh, you know, I still had the ideas, I just couldn't execute it. Do you know what I'm saying? Uh, it was, it was really difficult, really, but I feel so free at the moment, kind of just stripping everything back and not trying and uh, letting what would have been a title or a comment or a, uh, just one, one, one quote, and it, I guess it links into that. I don't know what, what it, where it links into. You know, Cy Twombly's done it, kind of, uh, but I'm doing it in 2019. About, I mean, there's many text people that have worked in text. Or there's people, there's lots to say, but I guess there's something in again the composition of where I do it on the canvas. But I, I kind of, I do it in, I do some of them blindfolded and with my left hand, and I kind of, I try and make it as difficult for me. So then. If I do it in the dark in the in the, stu in the studio or with my left hand or with a blindfold on, then it always looks fresh to me rather than kind of like approaching it and saying, right, where's the where's the right place, and then can and then I, the, I guess there's a religious element to it that where I'm just putting it in in God's hands and I'm kind of like I approach the canvas, I, I know what I'm gonna say, I know what I'm gonna write, I'll write it, I'll leave an abstraction or two and a handprint and then step back. And that's how it was supposed to be. And that, I'm not going to say I'm not religious. I don't, I don't think I really want to go into all, all that side. I'm fairly religious. And there's something really freeing about putting my practice in someone else's hands and uh, letting the outcome be what it's going to be and me being happy with that. Uh, that's took so many years of struggling and kind of to to accept that as part of my practice and then when I step away that's how it was meant to be and mm. it's so freeing man yeah it's beautiful yeah yeah wow well that's oh. a very nice place yeah. to end I think yeah cool. definitely accept cool. who you are make what you make and uh, and that's all good alright yeah yeah so thank you then thanks yeah. for having me cheers cheers guys